Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the 2021 National Foster Care Month Caregiver of the Year celebration. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. The Georgia Department of Family and Children's Services is so honored to present the 2021 Caregiver of the Year Awards to some very deserving families. These families have shown strength in adversity. They epitomize the meaning of partnership. The recipients of this year's Caregiver of the Year Award sacrifice and work hard every single day to ensure that Georgia's most vulnerable children receive the love, support, and guidance needed. Each of these families were nominated by their local region as outstanding caregivers, valued members of the foster care team, and most importantly, caregivers of the year. We would like to thank you all for showing your support today to these families. On behalf of the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services, we say congratulations to all of our 2021 caregivers of the year. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Rollins, director of the division. Uh, I'm so happy to be here at Truist Park and really want to thank the Atlanta Braves uh, Baseball Club for inviting us here to do this. Um, you know, we're here in the home of champions to really uh, congratulate some champions on the work very well done. You know, uh, I think to some extent uh, being a foster parent is kind of like baseball. Um, you, you may be a utility player, you may be a right fielder, everybody has a position. And the truth is we need different types of foster parents, different types of kinship caregivers for different types of children. Each child who comes into our foster care system is unique. Each has his or her own special needs, strengths, weaknesses, talents. And foster parents like coaches can help develop those talents. And it takes certain types of foster parents, for example, to deal with a teenager uh, or to deal with a young child or to deal with a, a, the needs of a child who has uh, some special, perhaps, learning or mental health needs. So in Georgia, of course, we have about 11,000 children in foster care, as y'all know. And then, of course, we have about another 800 youth between the ages of 18 and 21 who are, we are helping to transition from sort of the farm league of childhood to the, to the majors, the, to adulthood. And so it's really the, uh, the privilege of our agency to work with our foster parents and our kinship caregivers to make sure that these young people are developing their skills so that they can play in the game of life, so to speak, at the absolute highest level possible. Um, I think that it's really important as we honor these caregivers today to recognize that they are all, uh, they're exemplars, they're shining stars, they're all you know, MVPs in this work. But as with the baseball team, there are lots of others who are on the team and lots of others who are supporting the team. So I think it's also a good in this month of National Foster Care Month to recognize not only our champion uh, foster parents and caregivers, but also to recognize all of those who are playing in supporting roles, uh, whether you are a, uh, a foster parent recruiter whether you work at one of our child placing agencies and support foster parents in terms of social work and case management, whether you're a foster care case manager, or whether you're part of a church or an organization that supports foster parents by providing uh, meals or babysitting or uh, support groups or date nights or, or anything like that. We need everybody working together to make sure that we are supporting the team that is supporting this agency in, in caring for Georgia's children. And of course, I think it's also important, and one of the reasons we like, we're recording this, I think Ramirez is my videographer here. Uh, Ramirez is recording this also because it's important for us to get the word out so that we, uh, we are not only showing off the great uh, work that we're doing here at this agency and the great work that our foster parents are doing, but so that we can also get the community uh, fired up about what we're doing. And so that they can cheer on 
the work that these foster parents and kinship caregivers are doing and making sure that children are becoming those whom God intended them to be as adults. So I want to thank you all, all for uh, being here. I want to thank those uh, of our foster parent and kinship caregivers who are winning these awards who could not be here. And I certainly want to thank everyone who has participated in getting us to the point where we are in Georgia, where we hopefully are becoming a state in which we value our foster parents and our kinship caregivers as those who are essential, essential uh, servant, servant leaders in making sure that we are caring for Georgia's most vulnerable and, uh, and, and children in need. And I certainly want to couldn't leave without once again thanking the Braves, the Braves organization, for partnering with us in this work. So thank y'all. At this time, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our guest speaker, who will be bringing our congratulatory message to these amazing caregivers. Today's speaker is none other than Mr. Greg McMichael. Mr. McMichael was born in Knoxville, Tennessee and played for the University of Tennessee. In 1988, the Cleveland Indians drafted him in the seventh round. After playing five seasons in the minor leagues, Greg was called up to the big league for our hometown, Atlanta Braves in 1993. He spent eight seasons in the major leagues with the Braves, the Mets, the Dodgers, and the A's. He played on two World Series teams and was runner-up of Rookie of the Year in 1993. He held the record for most consecutive saves by a rookie until 2005. In 1993 and 94, he was the closer for the Braves and was the 1993 Topps Rookie All-Star. In 1995 and 96, Greg was a member of the Atlanta Braves World Series teams, respectively. He has pitched in over 450 games with 53 saves and a career ERA of 3.25. Greg is currently the Director of Alumni Relations and co-host of the official Braves podcast, Behind the Braves. And lastly, but certainly not least, I believe this is the most formidable stat and accomplishment by Mr. McMichael. He has been married for 33 years and has six brilliant children. At this time, I introduce the son and present to others, Braves legend, World Series champion, and family man, Mr. Greg McMichael. I want to bring Stephen with me everywhere I go. Wow, what an introduction. I appreciate that. Well, so good to be here today, uh, to be among all the all-stars and, and uh, with you on um, virtually. It's great to be here in my, uh, where my office is, which is uh, the Alumni Lounge and at Truist Park. Uh, we're very proud of what we have going on here as an organization and, and, uh, and being able to be a part of events like this. So thank you so much for, for having me today. So a little bit about me. Um, I grew up like a lot of athletes where we played sports all the time. I was never forced to play sports. It's just something about competition drove me to want to be to participate so whether it was swimming or basketball baseball football i ran track i mean i did everything wherever they were handing out trophies i wanted to be a part of that and that drove me for a lot of my a lot of my youth until one day i uh, i started having some knee problems and i went to the doctor as a young man i was about 13 years old and the doctor shared with me that i developed a rare cartilage disease called osteochondritis desiccans at that time, he told me he probably would never play sports again. And you can imagine being devastated as a young man where your whole life is wrapped up in athletics and then you're told you'd never be able to play again. So I really struggled with my identity. You can imagine I was, uh, uh, athletics was how I identified myself and all of a sudden that was taken away. So I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, 
the same time my family, my parents decided that they were going to get a divorce, so my whole world was crumbling around me. And uh, things weren't going very well. I was really struggling with who I was, and I got involved with um, some alcohol and drugs and doing some different things. And, but an interesting thing happened. My parents, three years later, came back to us and said they were going to get remarried. And I thought, man, I know people who are getting divorced, but I've never heard of anybody that's getting remarried. So uh, as they started to share with me that God did a work in their lives and they really believed that, um, that God wanted them to be back together, I, the first time in my life I thought, okay, wow, if, uh, if God could pull this off, then I really uh, want to see who He is and what He has planned for me, but not, not right now. So as I started to regain some strength, I, I defied the doctors and I said, you know what, I'm going to play, I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm miserable, I want to try to pitch. I thought that was the least resistance on my body. So I started pitching and I got uh, stronger. And uh, as I got into high school, uh, we ended up winning the state championship. I got a scholarship at the University of Tennessee and things were going really well. But, uh, but internally, I, I really struggled again with my identity, and it was at that time that my parents shared with me that God did have a plan for my life, but I needed to submit to that plan. So I did, and as I went through uh, the minor leagues being drafted, as Stephen was saying, um, I really leaned upon that because there were a lot of struggles. There were a lot of struggles in the minor leagues. You were not getting paid a whole lot, and uh, your body's taking a physical toll. I still had the disease that I, I had struggled with, and it, it continued to affect me until this day. But at the time, I, there was plenty of times where I really wanted to give up. And I had some really neat people come alongside of me. I think about coaches, I think about my scout specifically, showed up one day at the ballpark when I was ready to quit. And he said, um, how you doing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm really struggling because physically I just can't pitch. And as he encouraged me to stick it out and said, don't quit now because you'll, you'll forever regret it. And I thought, wow, why, why did he show up today to, to really encourage me? And, you know, as I went home and I, and I shared with my wife that my scout showed up and we started to pray and ask God, you know, how do we physically stick it out? It was amazing because within a year and a half, I was in the big leagues. Here I was in low A wanting to quit and change the course of my life. And a year and a half because one guy stepped into my life and who was a mentor to me, who stepped in and said, you know, stick it out. You know, you're going to make it. Don't worry about it. Just keep plugging forward. And then all of a sudden things change. I get to the big leagues and, uh, and it wasn't like everything was perfect, but I was able to persevere. I, I, I drew upon that experience of wanting to quit. And then I, I used it for the next time that things got tough. And you know what, from that time um, until I got to the big leagues and then I was able to become the closer for the Atlanta Braves and we had to go on to win the world championship, it was stuff that I couldn't have dreamed of. So I knew that that person was in my life for a specific person that encouraged me at the right time. And there were many more people like that. It wasn't just that scout, but there was my wife, there was my family that stood behind me and encouraged me and they prayed for me. So after I retired in uh, 2001, I really decided, trying to decide what am I going to do? What is, my, what is the next career uh, that I'm going to uh, pursue? And that was a tough decision. Think about it, as an athlete, your whole life you played baseball, you played football, you played basketball. And now you're a young man, you're 32 years old, 33, 34, and you've got to put aside all that you've learned and you've got to change course in a career. And that was a, another hard time in my life because I tried a couple things and I wasn't very successful. So I, I drew from the experience of being an athlete and I thought, okay, well, I just got to work a little bit harder. But really neat thing, I, I, had, some, I had some men who came around, around, uh, around me at my church. And they started to pray for me and they started to counsel, counsel me. And they started to ask me, you know, what is it that you want to do? What do you see yourself doing? And I said, honestly, I really don't know. And two men specifically stepped up and they said, we think you need to go back and work for the Atlanta Braves. And in my mind, I'm thinking, no, they're going to want me to be a scout. They're going to want me to be a coach. And I really did not want to do that. I had young kids at home. And that meant traveling and, and doing things that I really wanted to get away from as a ball player. And so I uh, really had a decision to make. And they said, no, we really think there's something else. And so as I sat there, and it, literally in one week, and as I prayed and I asked, what is it that I should do? God gave me a vision for what I'm doing today, and that's really uh, in a support role, in a, in a mentor role for a, a lot of young athletes who are transitioning out of the game of baseball, and that we created the Alumni Association. So now, um, being able to be a part of that, uh, that person that's kind of on the front lines who's encouraging people, 
but it's trying to help young men go from one career to another. That's what I get to do on a daily basis. Plus, I get to hang out with, uh, with old teammates. So in a sense, I'm a servant leader. I'm a servant leader for the organization because these people don't work for us. The, the former players, they don't work for us. But they are incredible assets and they're incredible um, spokespeople for our organization because they come back and the fans remember them. So I get to pour into their lives. And I get to be that encouraging voice and that teammate. But I'm a teammate now in a different way which I really enjoy. So God's brought me full circle into a role that uh, I never thought I would be able to do. But I keep drawing back upon those experiences when I was a player, when I was a young man that was told that I would never play and that, uh, that I was wanting to quit. And those people came around me and encouraged me. I get to do that now on a daily basis. And it's a lot of fun. So fast forward, uh, um, as I started this role with the Braves, I was able to... Um, uh, give back in other ways too as well. So I think about my family and I shared the story uh, a little bit um, year, I guess a few months ago when we were talking about this program that my family started something uh, a charity in Tennessee where we actually work with foster care families and we try to um, step in and, and stand in the gap with some of the kids so we're we provide backpacks and suitcases for kids who are entering the welfare system we also try to put on some events, so summer events, Christmas parties, where we try to do our part. And, and how we got there is that my niece, who uh, has about 10 adoptive kids out of the wel welfare system, and she just uh, she stepped in. She was in a private organization that was a, a part of adoption, and she got out of there and said, I would like to do more. How can I do more? And so as she was working and ob obviously intimately knows what you guys go through in the foster care system, she uh, said, how can I stand in the gap and how can I uh, make an impact on some of these kids' lives? So we tried to expand it, knowing that we couldn't adopt 20, 30, 40, 50 kids, but we could find other ways to impact families. And so my dad came alongside of her and they started this charity. And uh, it's been going since 2013. I'm really proud of it because, um, number one, I get to be a part of it. And I could be a part of it because we have a golf tournament. So I get to bring alumni up. And we bring a lot of education and we bring some notoriety to what's going on to help people become aware of what's going on in the foster care system and, and make them aware of people like you and what great job that you're doing. So I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish and what we've done over these last um, eight years. And that's something that we, t uh, we plan to continue to, to do. So my message today is, is pretty simple. I think we all have a role to play. And I think as Tom was talking about, I love the analogy of the game of baseball because it is a team sport. We all can't be the pitcher. We all can't be Hank Aaron and hit 755 home runs. We can't all be the closer, but we can have a role. And I love, uh, I love the term servanthood. I love the terms selfless because when you're on a team, you have to, you have to be that person. No matter what the coach puts you in, you have to decide, am I going to do that role or am I not? You have to decide in your mind, am I going to take on um, and do what the coach asked me to do or am I not? And so I think if the team's going to be successful, we all have to look at those roles and we have to decide, am I going to play my part today? So no matter what that is, I think we do have, we do uh, all have to play a part. Um, and, and again, as I said, I had so many partners, so many people that have come alongside me over the years that have encouraged me, that have mentored me, and that have made me into the man I am today. I think about my wife. Without her, there's no way in the world I would be here today. Her sacrifice, her servanthood, her willingness to help raise the kids when I was on the road, her willingness to encourage me and sometimes tell me the way it is, it's things that I needed to hear. She was right alongside of me in those tough times when I was in the minor leagues. Those tough times early on when we were separated a lot and we were married. I could have never done it without her. And I had a great example. I mean, I had parents that have been married. Yes, they were divorced for three years, but they've been married twice for now uh, well, over 60 years, which is amazing. They've, they've had an incredible example, not only in my life, but my parents' life. So think about my niece, her example of adopting nine to 10 kids and her work in the foster care system. I think about my brother trying to adopt kids right now. And so I've had many, many examples. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, I, I just want to encourage you today to continue to, to play your role. 
and I know you guys are, and that's why we're here to celebrate you. So thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for the people that are involved, the mentors, the volunteers, the policymakers, everything that you guys are doing to help protect our kids here in the state of Georgia. Uh, the Atlanta Braves and myself, we're very thankful for that. So I just want to conclude by saying um, that I'm honored to be a part of this National Foster Care Month. This has been uh, a great experience for us uh, just to be a part of this and find ways to see how we can do our part. And uh, so we're here to do that. Uh, we love that you uh, picked us as a partner for this. And uh, we just um, ask that if there's anything we can do or if I can do in the future, um, please don't hesitate to ask. And finally, I just say, uh, you know, I just pray that God blesses your work. He continues to give you the strength and the grace and the courage to continue on because it's such a great thing that you're doing. So thank you very much. I think one of the interesting things about all the foster parents I've met and all the people, really all the people who work in this system, is that like you, so many of those that we work with are able to care for others because they have themselves overcome so much. And so I really thank you for your example and for your talk today. Um, so speaking of, uh, we get to, I guess, give out some awards today. We have some of y'all here today. Some of these are really virtual, so to speak. But um, I just want to take some time today to recognize some very special people. Uh, the foster parent, foster caregivers of the year, and also our Rock Award winners. We'll get to that in a moment. Start off with uh, Region 1. Blake and Julie Stringer are here. Uh, they are the parents of a 10-year-old, Sean, and they have been a, a Cherokee foster family since 2016. Have said yes to 19 placements and re recently helped reunite a 12-year-old boy with his mother she had not been with in years. So thank you for your service and thank you for being selfless and, and displaying servant leadership. Uh, Region 2, Michael and Rachel Harper were originally approved as an adoptive family and felt called to expand their family of five through adoption. Um, after becoming approved, they saw the need for more foster homes and stepped out and changed from an adoptive home to a, partner, a parent, partnership parent home. Uh, they uh, closed their home in 2016, but then reopened it in Habersham, and then uh, just recently celebrated the adoption of their sixth child in March of 2021 after this child was in care of a little less than four years. Again, an example of selflessness and servant leadership. You'll hear me say that the entire time. Natalie Freeman in Region 3, Paulding County, is a single mother who has raised three daughters to adulthood. She's an RN, uh, but she not only fosters children, but she, she's uh, caring for both ends of the spectrum. She's also caring for her elderly mother. Um, Ms. Freeman is a, also a non, has also a, a nonprofit organization. Uh, she's responsible for, or they are responsible for providing coats and, and materials for uh, and food for local folks who need that. And she really goes above and beyond um, to advocate for the needs of the children she serves. So thank you to her. Uh, again, uh, Region 4, Brian and Karen Bono uh, have been married for 36 years, have three adult children of their own, but they've been fostering for 17 years and they're providing care for uh, children of all ages, and genders, and races and currently are fostering a medically fragile child who's been in their home for three years uh, and have been very open, I think it's important to note, to having the parents visiting their children at their home. It's that sort of creating those bonds of connectedness between the foster parent and the biological parent that helps us all be more connected. So thank you to them. Uh, Region 5, Jennifer Burrell, in Oconee County. Uh, has a loving foster parent who began fostering in 2017. Uh, she maintained a sibling group of two for a little over three years, right along with a six-month placement of an infant, and of course treated them all as part of her family. I think it's so important that maintaining relationships with bio parents um, is, is her calling. And, I've, uh, and so it's just uh, she and Octavius uh, have maintained a relationship with the children and their parents and have uh, often helping to babysit and walking through the parent process is just great work. Again, this partnership, the idea of, of foster parents as not only as caregivers but as mentors for, for biological families. Uh, Greg and Katie Lyles, Region 6, Crawford County, have been foster parents for the last six years. 
They have five biological children and two adopted children. In other words, they have seven children, period. <laughs> children are children. Greg and Katie are currently fostering a sibling group of uh, ages 12, uh, excuse me, 8, 12, and 16. I had three children in my home when, uh, when my wife and I raised, and I, that was enough for me. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm very, I'm very uh, uh, jealous of their ability to do this. They have nurtured and uh, nursed and nurtured the children placed in their home in a miraculous way. One child uh, had a feeding tube, and they have actually worked to get that child off the feeding tube. Um, the other child, they have been able to reduce the medications the child takes. Uh, Mrs. Lyle was able to connect her son with a sister he had not seen in five years. And William had an older sister he hadn't seen in over five years, and they, allow, uh, uh, they also allowed their daughter to FaceTime with her birth mother. So and I think the point of, you know, not only do we want to celebrate the Lyles family, but we also want to point out today that to the extent that we can create permanent homes for children through adoption, but at the same time maintain just that child's sense of connection with biological family because we know that that's always going to be there. Mark and Jenny Lopez, uh, Region 7, Burke County, have been fostering for two years. They've already fostered 11 children in that time and are in the process of adopting two. I think, you know, they're a military family, so they certainly know how valuable a good support system is to a thriving home. When uh, Greg was talking a minute ago, I was thinking about the fact that probably uh, being a minor league baseball player or a baseball player is just kind of like being in the military. You're always off. You don't know where you are, so you have to have that support system. The Lopez said, the Lopez family said, we wanted to impact our community by being an extended part of the family support system. It's our belief that if family of, families of origin know their children are in a loving, safe, and stable environment, they can focus on the steps in their case plan with one less thing to worry about. So thanks to them. In Region 8, Muskogee County, uh, Mitchell and Victoria Bonnet have been proudly served Muskogee County as foster and adoptive parents for the last five years. They got involved in fostering, as a lot of folks do, by happenstance. A friend of theirs uh, had a rel uh, was a relative resource for their now adopted daughter, and they have fostered nine children. Uh, seven were part of a sibling group, of which they've since adopted three, and so they've adopted four in total. And again, uh, you know, not only do we want to celebrate them, but I think it's also worth pointing out that a lot of our foster parents and caregivers end up coming into this unexpectedly. They may end up uh, having a, a, a relative who has a child that suddenly needs care. Or they may dip their toes in the, in the pool of fostering by babysitting for a foster parent or by getting involved in a, in a drive for, to, for diapers or, or clothes or something for foster children. So there's many ways to help. Kaylee Dees, Region 9, Toombs County, this is a small old jurisdiction, uh, signed up to be a foster parent in 2018 while she was serving as a Vidalia City Councilwoman. Through her involvement, she saw many of the problems facing the community and knew there was a shortage of foster homes in the region. As a single woman and a small business owner, there were many fears of inadequacy and time constraints that crossed her mind, but she allowed her deep desire to give children a safe, temporary home to overcome those worries. She found a way to say yes to being a foster parent when many people would have said they could not find time. In the end, Kaylee's yes turned into fostering and then to adoption of two precious girls. Kelly didn't run for city council on, on uh, her city council as a, a re-election. Uh, I mean, got two kids at home. It's probably hard to be a city councilor as well as a, a parent. Um, in Region 10, Decatur County, Richard and Christy Cole have been fostering for three years. Mr. and Mrs. Cole have embodied the true meaning of partnership parenting going above and beyond to ensure that not only the children's needs are met, but meeting the birth family where they are. The Coles lead with a servant's heart, and I think Mr. Cole uh, being a pastor and Mrs. Cole being a teacher, certainly uh, they, they have that grounding and that background. Um, their careers provide them with the experience and the wisdom uh, and the knowledge that, uh, that we all have the duty to serve only. Uh, they have invited birth families to church and lunch after. Uh, and for one Thanksgiving, they, they, uh, they got the birth family to the house and uh, had a whole big old Thanksgiving for everybody. And it's just wonderful work. Warren and Margaret Fussell in Lowndes County down in Valdosta became foster parents in 2007. Since becoming foster parents, they have 
help provide care for over 43 children. Now their initial uh, motivation for becoming foster parents was that they just enjoy helping others and love kids, and that continues today. They have main contact with their first initial placement in 2008, who was reunified, and they understand how important it is for siblings to continue to communicate and see each other. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Fussell. Uh, Edward and Nicole Fuller in Bullock County have been true advocates for the foster care children placed in their home. When a two-year-old child with developmental needs was placed in their home last summer, they immediately got involved with Babies Can't Wait, and they advocated for special therapies for the child. They weaned him from a bottle, provided him with a healthy diet, implemented a daily schedule, and provided him with unconditional love. Within six months, this child was tra has transitioned from a child who is not verbal at all, not speaking, to one who is speaking in sentences, to a child who is self-controlled, and I think this is so important to show how our foster parents are not only just caregivers, they are therapists, they are motivators, they are coaches, and they are really often the folks who are out there advocating for services for children. And that's what we need our caregivers to do, and I'm very grateful for it. Uh, Erica Spillers is here. Ms. Spillers is Region 13. How are you? Uh, she is a St. Louis native, became an approved foster parent with DFAX and Cobb in May of 2020. You have three biological children who are somewhat grown, 24, 23, and still one at home, I reckon, 14. And with a love of giving back to the community, Ms. Spillers took on the task to be a foster parent when a close family friend became involved with our agency and uh, ultimately had her, had her child come into a, to care. And uh, while Ms. Spillers worked during that time to remain involved and a support to her friend, and I think it's her godson as well, uh, she noticed some things that would lead her straight to Cobb County defects and you have shown, uh, you, have, you are being awarded in part because you have shown in a short period of time that you have chosen to walk through faith, walk by faith through your fostering process and really help uh, with transformation and healing, especially the teens. So thank you, Ms. Miller, you're a wonderful person. Uh, Ms. Shanquisa B uh, Bowden is our four Region 14 uh, Foster Parent of the Year, Caregiver of the Year. She is a single loving mother of four children. When she was first made aware of her brother's son entering care, she was the first to come forward and welcome her nephew into her home. She was later informed that her nephew had siblings in her care as well. Uh, she didn't know these siblings, but she was willing to bring them in. And I think this is a, another, gives me another, point, another opportunity to make a point about our caregivers. Um, as I said, so many times our caregivers, our foster parents, our kinship caregivers, come into this by happenstance. They don't expect this to happen. This is something that happens to them, but they accept the challenge and they step up to the plate. And I think it is that uh, walking by faith, that courage that we are really, really thankful for. Uh, we also have, um, let's see, uh, uh, today we also have the uh, Child Placement Agency Caregivers of the Year. Um, let's see, the Multi-Agency Alliance for Children selected uh, Georgia Parent Support Network Partnership Parent Ms. Beasia Jackson as their caregiver, the caregiver of the year. Uh, and so what they have said in their nomination is that Ms. Jackson is a perfect example of a support system that believes in working closely with birth families and empowering them to build uh, positive relationships. She also believes in the importance of keeping families involved and allowing them to be involved in decision making. She is an active parent of our AFPAG, our Adoptive uh, in Foster Parent Association. Uh, she is uh, supporting other foster parents by having positive relationships with, the, with them and uh, certainly through the Georgia Parent Support Network is doing a wonderful job of connecting again with others. Uh, Beasia has a firm belief in supporting older youth in care and maintaining positive sibling connections. She engages in regular and frequent visits among family members and with the worker behavior aids and all of those other resources for the child. The foster, think about the foster parent as that spider in the middle of the web, is what I always like to think, who's like going around and making sure that that, that, that child is connected to all the services and supports that he or she needs, and constantly build, building that web. Let's see, uh, we have Ms. Cheryl McLeod, uh, the Family Focused Treatment Association, Association selected Bloom, our youth partnership parent 
Ms. Cloud, McLeod as caregiver of the year, and they said of her, she is a seasoned foster parent who specializes in caring for medically fragile children, large sibling groups, and hard to place older youth. Beginning her foster care, uh, fostering career in New Jersey, she has fostered over 50 severely uh, and needy therapeutic foster children over her foster, uh, 15 year foster parent career in Georgia. Um, she has helped foster parent, uh, spear foster parent support groups, recruitment activities, just doing a wonderful job. And again, uh, Greg, kind of like, you know, we talk about players who just are at the right place at the right time. You know, the, the guy that you know can steal second base every time. Uh, this is, this is, Ms. McLeod is kind of that special player in this work who can, who is there when we need someone with special talents to address the special needs of certain children. Okay, Together Georgia selected a Wellroot Family Services Partnership parent, Ms. Stephanie Horn, as their care caregiver of the year. Ms. Horn, I'm glad you're here with us today. You have been fostering since July of 2019, and I appreciate that you believe in the importance of supporting the birth family and being a listening ear. I understand you have assisted in visitation and remain in constant contact with the birth mother throughout your first placement. Uh, you uh, helped in ensuring the reunification transition was smooth, uh, welcomed the birth mother with open arms, I spent time bonding over the child that y'all have cared for together, and I appreciate that you're an advocate for recruitment uh, and joining other, getting others to join our fostering community, and I appreciate your openness and willingness to take siblings in your home. More than anything else, I appreciate your servant's heart. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Georgia Alliance of Therapeutic Services selected Devereux Partnership parents Bobby and Joanne Jackson as their caregivers of the year. Uh, oh my goodness, they have been partnership parents with Devereux for 20 years. Uh, have fostered over some 40 children in their home. And of course, as y'all know, Devereux is really specialized in dealing with some of our children who have the most significant behavioral, developmental disabilities issues, autism issues, that kind of thing. The Jacksons are described by Devereux as two of the most patient and kind foster parents they've ever seen. They must be to continue in this work. Uh, they take at least two family trips per year. They take their, their children in care along with them. Uh, and Ms. Jackson recently implemented a girls' night so the girls in her home could experience fun together by participating in activities like going to the mall and out to eat. So I'm really grateful to those folks for that. Um, so what is the Rock Award? The Rock Award uh, stands for resiliency, uh, being open-hearted, being connected, in other words, like we talked about, connecting folks. And then uh, kindred, you know, caring for one's family and relations. Um, it's a new award given to our caregivers that, who have exhibited high character and leadership, especially during this time of the pandemic. Uh, you know, think about how many of our foster parents and caregivers have brought children into their home knowing that, that they may be making a sacrifice because if that child had COVID. So I just think it's incredibly selfless for them to do that. And so is this really a reward that just kind of recognizes our, our caregivers for going above and beyond despite what we're dealing with in the world. So we'll start off, of course, from Region 2, Hart County, Mr. Randy Pearson, because he's here. Yes. Mr. Pearson. Uh, so it says here, Randy, that in, uh, you decided to open your home in, for foster care in 2018 when a teenager you knew needed a home. You were diligent during your home study process and were approved as a foster parent in early 2019. And since then, you have fostered over 23 teenage boys, and you have four long-term placements in your home who are 15, 16, 17, and also 15. And uh, I just want to thank you for stepping up to the plate and just swinging hard, okay? It's great work, and especially with, we all know, we all of those who, who have raised teenagers know how it takes a special, patient person to do that, so thank you. And then Region 1, these folks aren't here, but I want to certainly shout out to them. James and Loretta Burke from Chattooga County have been fostering uh, for Chattooga County in Region 1 for nine years. They have five adult children and several grandchildren. And since, adopt, since starting their uh, fostering journey, they've adopted two large sibling groups of three and four. And uh, the folks here say they make parenting look easy. They are true advocates for partnering with birth families 
and maintaining sibling connections when siblings can't be placed together. And again, that is a special talent, the ability to care for large sibling groups. And we, as y'all know, we need more foster parents and caregivers in the state who are, uh, who are, have the talent and the skill necessary to do that. In Region 3, uh, Joseph and Amanda Bryant from Floyd County have been open, uh, have been fostering since 2016 as partnership parents. They have fostered 28 children and have adopted seven with another finalization in this month. The Bryant family said their original intention was not to adopt, but God just kept sending foster children and we just kept loving on them. And so I think that this kind of rare uh, attitude, the special kind of attitude, is uh, one in which we see love and acceptance prevail. Uh, and this kind of service with humility certainly deserves uh, an award. So I just want to thank them. In Region 6, uh, Bibb County for Richard and Christy Donahue. A little over a year ago, they became a vital part of their, our agency when they were approved as resource parents. Since their approval, they have proven themselves to be true partnership parents. From their first long-term placement, the Donahues have not only opened their hearts and homes to the children placed with them, but have also embraced their birth parents as well. As a result of the close relationship formed with one birth mother, the Donahues single-handedly obtained donations to furnish a new apartment. When the mother was battling COVID-19, the Donahues delivered groceries and medications to her home and checked on her often. And that wasn't in their job description, folks. But being the selfless uh, servants they are, they did it. And then uh, finally, I believe, uh, Ms. Arianna Williams Washington, Region 14 in Fulton County, is a single mother of three adult daughters. She has been fostering teens since uh, May of 2020 takes pride in caring for them, and she is uh, certainly uh, has that special skill of, deal of dealing with the needs of teenagers that we have. We want to, uh, this award is to thank her for being an excellent foster parent, and she is very well deserving of this award. Um, so those are just the awards we're giving out today. Um, the truth is that uh, every single one of our foster parents and kinship caregivers deserves our thanks, um, our appreciation, uh, our gratitude for their service. But um, so we've had a, a good time doing this, this morning, and I thank again the Braves and Greg for, for opening up the stadium to us. And uh, we hopefully we'll see y'all soon, maybe at a Braves game. Thanks. And so now we've come to the sad part where we must say goodbye. But before we go, I just have a little closing for you this morning. Today we have honored some amazing caregivers. We want to thank all of our nominees and winners who dedicate their time, energy, and effort to care for Georgia's children. As National Foster Care Month comes to an end, we want you to know that we will not stop celebrating you. We need you as a part of our team. You are truly MVPs, our most valuable partners. Yeah, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage you to continue to do all that you do on behalf of Georgia's children. Most importantly, remember to practice self-care because you cannot pour from an empty cup. I hope today that we've just poured a little bit of inspiration into your cup so that you can continue to motivate others. I'd be remiss if I did not take some time to thank our fearless director, Tom Rawlings. You've led the division through unprecedented times with courage, open communication, and passion. Your selfless leadership has allowed the division to continue to serve and protect the community and the staff. Director Rollins, the Caregiver Recruitment and Retention Unit thanks you for all that you do. Thanks also to the Caregiver Recruitment and Retention staff who have helped us behind the scenes pull this together. We would also like to thank the Office of Provider Management and our private providers who continue to partner with us every single day. Last but not least, we cannot leave this beautiful facility without thanking the Braves organization for hosting this event. 
So on behalf of the Division of Family and Children's Services, Caregiver Recruitment and Retention Unit, thank you for coming out today. Thank you for all that you do and all that you will continue to do, not only in May, but every single day. So from myself, Dejari Patterson, Caregiver Recruitment and Retention Unit Director, and Mr. Stephen Turner, our Statewide Recruitment and Retention Manager, we thank you and have an amazing day.